Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. I wanted, to, actually, I was going to go in a different order, but since you were saying member states, no member state support, I'm sure you've seen just recently, um, for example, the government of South Sudan has asked for a role in investigating the, sexual exp the alleged sexual exploitation by uh, UN police in WOW, and they were turned down. They, 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 they asked to do a joint investigation. They said that they don't believe OIOS, that they think that OIOS, there's something, you know, they may misunderstand whether it's under the General Assembly or under the Secretary General, but they, they asked for a role in the investigation and were rejected. Recently, Ms. Uh, uh, Pramila Patton said that, that on, a, on a similar claim of sexual exploitation in Sudan, in Darfur, that, that the, 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 the people charged were, quote, turned over to Sudanese justice, which I'm not sure if it's true or not, but I'd like you to, I guess, to address that about the, 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 the countries whose citizens are allegedly abused, their role in investigating it. In particular, just earlier today, I was asking Stefan about the Bishop of Bengasu in CAR saying that sexual exploitation was common or took place in, in, when he was sheltering people in his church. And Stefan said that, you know, an investigation was done, no, nothing to substantiate it. But it seems from the outside, like, the guy's a bishop. It doesn't, he's probably not in the business of totally making that up. So I guess those are three things. And, uh, uh, what is the role of, of, of host countries, DPK of host countries in investigating things? How was the investigation in, in Bengasu done? And, and finally, there's a recent case of Sri Lanka, uh, the, a, a deployment of, a, of, a, of, a, of an individual to UNIFIL was, has been put on hold due to vetting. But the people that came forward with that evidence said they had the similar evidence against the last four contingent uh, commanders it sent to UNIFIL by Sri Lanka and that there's, there was no vetting there. What's vetting? Where's the vetting of the past behavior of deployed peacekeepers? Where does it come into this strategy that you've outlined? Okay, so I can, I can answer some of this uh, at a general level, but not at a specific level, at a case level, and I, I no longer work in DPKO or DFS, so I'll have to defer, obviously, those questions, whether, Sylvain, you want to take them now or later, um, you know. I, what I can tell you generally is the following, is that member states who deploy troops uh, to peacekeeping missions retain national jurisdiction over the behavior of those troops. Um, it is, it is, uh, it's based very often, uh, or it's not based very often, it's, it's, uh, there are times when member states have bilateral agreements with other states about allowing states where, where troops are deployed to exercise jurisdiction. Those are typically, in, again, conducted through bilateral arrangements. That is not the arrangement for UN peacekeeping. Um, you know, we, as we've talked about many times before, member states retain that jurisdiction. I can't speak about these uh, these individual cases, but what I can tell you, the Secretary General has been, you know, adamant. When when we receive allegations, we will never turn a blind eye. And when someone who is serious and credible in their communities or otherwise, we will will take those allegations seriously. And he expects a follow up and a full inc full accounting of what we know. If if I mean, I mean, I think that was exactly what was done in Bengasu. And you look at at South Sudan; they were credible allegations. The SRSG moved very quickly. In Benghazi, we received allegations, and uh, they 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 went forward and investigated. Sylvain, did you want to add? Perhaps, uh, sorry, perhaps just to refer you the the the, the cooperation uh, the issue of cooperation between the national authority on issues related to uh, investigation or or uh, criminal prosecution or civil prosecution is actually tackled on their the status of force agreement. I don't have the exact uh, the exact uh, provision of the, the status of force agreement for any particular mission, uh, but the, if you look at the model so far, it addresses the issue and, and envisage cooperation between the UN and the, the whole state authority in uh, matters in which both, st both the UN and the, or the whole state have an interest. Matthew, and then we'll close it up. Okay, I, I just, one thing is, I, I mean, there, there are stories saying that unmissed uh, the, as, as a mission, turned down South Sudan's request to play a role. So I, I'm going to, I guess I'll, I'll, I don't know if the st status of forces f agreements are, are public. I remember in the Haiti case, it would turn out to be difficult to get it. But I guess, I, I guess I'm, I'm going to try to pursue and get to the bottom of that. But, and, and there's also the question of the vetting, Sri Lanka being an example of how the vetting of, 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 of the pre-deployment possible sexual abuse, for example, in a conflict like that took place in Sri Lanka, is done. But I, I have the, 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 when you say it's, it's you, your office covers anything done, you know, by UN, I guess, by UN personnel, would this, cover, would this cover against other UN personnel or contractors, or is it limited to the peacekeeping? I'm asking about UNFPA. There's a, fa there's a uh, fairly public case over there about uh, 
allegations about a, a person within UNFPA, Diego Palacios, abusing a contractor. And I wanted to know if you know of that case or if it falls so, under these policies. Yeah, so a couple of things. Generally speaking, case, case management is not my remit at all. That remains with the responsible officers or agencies where that case may arise, number one. Uh, number, number two, um, it, it's, and I'm just trying to work my way back in your question. Sure. So, so to, to whether, whether you would cover, let's even say just even within, with right. you so, blue on blue. You know, uh, so, that abuse. So, so we've actually been discussing this issue because sexual exploitation and abuse has been defined as abuse against a beneficiary of UN mm -hmm. uh, operations or services. So I, I don't like the phrase blue on blue, but I know I what you mean. So it, 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 would not, it would not necessarily characterize. However, we're trying to create mechanisms where it's easy for victims to report something when it has occurred, and we don't want them to have to wonder through the distinction. Is this harassment? Is this abuse? Am I under this or not? We just want to make it easy. And we realize there will be a commingling of, of allegations, potentially, that come through in these report mechanisms as they are developed. But we're, not, we're only in the initial stages of that. OK. Thank you very much. Thanks.